I was fortunate that I got into the right business at the right time. I got into the business of fashion. Did you know anything about fashion? I knew nothing. My father did not want to ask anybody for money. In 89, when he asked me, can you finance my election? I said, yes. In 82, you took 5 lakh rupees to your mother and said, here is the money, keep it. She said, I hope he's not doing some hanky-panky business because how can anybody make so much money overnight? Lady Diana was one of your customers. Royalty does not wear anything which is not made in England when they travel. She bought it and she wore it in Australia where she was photographed. Uh, let me take you back to your first dream, which was to become a millionaire. Uh, after you did your chartered accountancy, but uh, you told your father, I don't want to take up a job and I want to make my first million. Tell me about that. Many people who made it in life try to say that I did it. With, without luck, nothing happens. I was fortunate that I got into the right business at the right time. I got into the business of fashion. And at that time, there was huge demand for ladies' fashion garments, which were European, but Indian prints, Indian embroideries. You know, this was, if you remember those days, it was after the Beatle era. Yeah. So India was in demand, and these were novelties. And if you had the right product, the margins of profits were crazy. 70%, 80% were, you know, net margins. And we were also very fortunate that Mr. Rajiv Gandhi as Prime Minister, in order to encourage exports from India, waived all income taxes. So we were, all the money that we were making was tax-free. So that helped. But as I said earlier, fortunes turned overnight when I met a customer in France, who's still my company's customer. We were very clear that the, our company must give a good product, ethics were important. And I was one of the first uh, people in this industry who professionalized management. I brought in textile engineers into my company. I brought in chartered accountants, MBAs. Did you know anything about fashion? I knew nothing. I learned on the job. As I said, I got into it accidentally. First three, four years were very hard, but I was learning on the job. Why this obsession with money? The struggle that my father had to make, he was a minister for many years. Before that, he was a small businessman. Whatever meager savings he had were all spent during this tenure because he wanted to remain totally honest. And one of the handicaps that he had, and he always said that, he, the reason he did not fight Lok Sabha till 1989, he did not want to ask anybody for money because he said then he would be beholden to them. In 89, when he decided to fight the election, he asked me, can you finance my election? I said, yes. So I was clear that eventually I want to go to politics, but I want to have enough reserves of my own before I get to politics so that I can afford to fight elections on my own and I don't have to go with a begging uh, bowl to anybody. By 89, you were a rich man. And in 82, you took 5 lakh rupees for your, to your mother and said, here is the money, keep it, buy, me, buy a car. That was a funny incident because she didn't believe that I had made money so quickly. And my father was coming back from Russia. Uh, in fact, this was 81. Uh, he was ambassador there and he was coming back to India. And I said, please bring a car for me. You know, in those days, these foreign cars were a craze. Uh, and she said, but you know, the family doesn't have enough money. And I said, no, no, I've made enough money, don't worry, you bring the car. She wouldn't believe me. So that is how uh, I decided to withdraw money from the bank. I took cash to her and I said, here is the money, now you believe me. And then uh, she told your father, check how he's got this money. She I said, hope he's doing everything she right. She said, I hope he's not doing some hanky-panky business because how can anybody make so much money overnight? But that's the way the fashion business was then. I was not the only one. Dozens of other people also made money in the fashion business uh, or this industry in those days uh, because India was so much in demand. Lady Diana was one of your customers uh, in your fashion. Tell me about that. We started working with a company called Monsoon. 
which is got stores still in England, uh, large company there. And we designed a dress in our factory, which Monsoon bought from us. And Lady Diana was going to Australia with Prince Charles and she saw this dress. It was woven check, which looked like Scottish check. There is an unwritten rule that royalty does not wear anything which is not made in England when they travel. Okay. She thought that nobody would find out because it looked so, Span so Scottish and she fell in love with that dress. She bought it and she wore it in Australia where she was photographed. When that photograph was published in England, the owner of Monsoon, Peter Simon, he took a copy and sent it to me and said, look, Lady Diana has worn your dress. And that is how media in India picked it up. Uh, and the rest is history. So for your dress, she broke a rule. Yes, and they were very embarrassed because, uh, uh, in fact, the, the then ambassador, the high commissioner here, told me don't, don't publicize it too much because, you know, uh, you would be embarrassing them. You are also very fond of good shoes and probably obsessed. But every time you would buy a pair, your father would look and say, wasn't there one of my no, size? No, that's not true. I am not obsessed with shoes. My father loved to, ha he had a great collection of shoes. Uh, so I would first go and look for a shoe for him. And every time I found something good for him, I would buy one in my size also. Uh, but I'm not obsessed with shoes. I like comfortable shoes. And as I said to you earlier, I come from the world of fashion. Sh shoes also go out of fashion. So I don't like to wear something which is out of fashion. <laughs>